Welcome to the 15th annual CSUB Alumni Hall of Fame Awards. I'm Jim Scott. And I'm Maddie Jansen with KGET Channel 17, and we're delighted to bring you this year's program through your TV screens, devices, or wherever you get your Channel 17 news. If tonight were like the previous 14 Alumni Hall of Fame ceremonies, this is where we'd be finishing up our dinner, all dressed in our finest, yep. and settling in for the presentation of awards. We would have caught up with old friends and made some new ones and talked about how great it was was to all be together. Tonight, of course, is different. Each of us at home to stay safe. And while it may not have been our first choice, it turns out that this new way of doing things has some big silver linings. This is the first year the CSUB Alumni Hall of Fame ceremony is being televised. We're showcasing the talent and heart of top runners to the widest audience ever. And far more than just a few hundred people can join in on the celebration. So to all of you watching who've never attended an Alumni Hall of Fame ceremony, especially especially those who graduated from CSUB, we send you an extra special welcome. Indeed we do. What also makes this a particularly special night is that the university is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. So happy birthday, CSUB. I wore the proper colors just in honor of this marvelous school. During its 50 years educating roadrunners, CSUB has been a place of thought, of innovation, creativity, and teaching. More than 56,000 students have completed their degrees and become alumni. To those of you watching, we want to thank you for taking what you have learned in the classroom out into the world over this past half century. And because of you, our local community, and the communities where you live and work in across our nation and our world are better places to live in. Maddie and I have been the Alumni Hall of Fame Masters of Ceremonies for the many years now and are excited to continue that tradition. We are particularly excited to induct these five amazing graduates into the CSUB Alumni Hall of Fame. They are inspirations, not only to their alma mater, but to the people who've seen or been impacted by their work. As you will learn tonight, many of those are the young and the disadvantaged, first generation students, scholar athletes, exploited children, and immigrants here to build a better life. And they are Dr. Mary Barlow, Kern County Superintendent of Schools, and someone who has devoted her career to making sure our schools are a place where kids can reach their full potential. Raji Brar, Chief Operating Officer of her family's business, Countryside Market and Restaurants, and a groundbreaking political leader, philanthropist, and advocate for the Sikh community. Jeremy Gunn, one of the winningest coaches in NCAA soccer and currently head of the men's squad at Stanford University. And Dr. Clark Jensen, who leads efforts around the world to rescue children from human trafficking, to reunite families and train advocates to do the same. Also honored tonight, Mr. John Means, a longtime educator, champion for underserved students, and former Bakersfield City Councilman and activist. Tonight's five inductees grow the total number of CSUB alumni Hall of Fame members to 59. They join educators, nurses, artists, business leaders, philanthropists, and government officials who've enriched their communities in innumerable ways and set examples for up-and-coming roadrunners to follow. Many past inductees are watching tonight, and we want to say a special hello to all of them. Now, I'd like to introduce Nancy Solis, president of the CSUB Alumni Association and a double alumna of the university. Good evening. On behalf of the more than 56,000 alumni of CSUB, I want to thank you for tuning in to tonight's broadcast and for joining the celebration of not only our five inductees, but the university's five decades of educating runners. I especially want to thank our 2021 Alumni Hall of Fame class, Mary, Raji, Jeremy, Clark, and John, for setting examples of the best ways to lead, to teach, to compete, and to protect. All of us who have graduated from this university have a lot to learn from your life's work. And for that, we are incredibly grateful. To everyone who supported tonight's event financially, I want to share with you where your money will go to. The Alumni Association funds scholarships for CSUB alumni pursuing their graduate's degree on campus 
This year we awarded more than $11,000 to nine students who not only proved their smarts, but their grit, determination, and resiliency through tough times. Close to my heart, we have a mentoring program that pairs alumni with current students that need a little bit more career guidance. This year, we matched up 113 mentees with 108 mentors in our Runner Alumni program. We also launched Runner Bridge, a networking and flash mentoring website that takes our programs global. To those who'd like to give financially, either to the Alumni Association or another program on campus, go to our website, www.csub.edu. The university's mission of educating the Valley's next generation of leaders, innovators, healers, educators, and more has never been more important. And we hope you will partner with us in that mission. Now you will be introduced to another inspirational leader that I am honored to know. CSUB President Lynette Zelezny is a huge supporter of the Alumni Hall of Fame, so much so she loves being part of the scheming that goes on when we surprise inductees with the news that they've been selected for the Hall of Fame. And this year she lured them onto Zoom calls with a technically honest but not wholly truthful request to discuss a piece of urgent university business. Here to congratulate Mary, Raji, Jeremy, Clark, and John, and to reflect on the many other accomplished alumni of the past 50 years, CSUB President Lynette Zelezny. Good evening, Runner family, friends, supporters, and our amazing alumni. As we honor the 2021 Alumni Hall of Fame inductees this evening, we must do so at a safe physical distance. We are not in the same room. Many of us are not in the same city or state. Our Runner family members are scattered near and far, making a difference in every corner of the globe. But make no mistake, we are together. There is a common thread that connects us. It is the shared belief that all things are possible through faith in ourselves and one another. That through education, we can uplift ourselves, our families, our communities, and humankind. That thread is like an invisible cord that connects our alumni to their home at CSUB as they venture out to pursue their dreams, following their goals and passions wherever they may lead. And that common cord that binds all of us has been strengthened through the adversity and loss we have endured this past year. Our Runner family has been tested. Our Runner family has sacrificed. Our Runner family has grieved. But our Runner family, especially the alumni, being honored this evening, are on the front lines of this pandemic, leading us through it. They are educators. They are leaders. They are entrepreneurs. They are philanthropists. And each and every one of them is CSUB. We induct this class of role models and leaders at a pivotal time in the life of our university. It was 50 years ago that the first of CSUB's students were greeted to a new college in a community that had never had access to a four-year college education. In the decades since, CSUB has earned a reputation as a bastion of hope and change for our community, thanks in large part to the accomplishments of our alumni. They are the pride of this valley, this state, this nation. As we reflect on 50 years, it is clear that our alumni have done so much to advance our lives and the lives of our children. These accomplished men and women have recorded so many firsts. It is truly breathtaking. For our young women roadrunners, I encourage you to look to the example of the women who came before you, shattering glass ceilings in their respective fields. Irma Carson, the first black woman to become a Bakersfield police officer. 
Pauline Larwood, the first woman elected to the Kern County Board of Supervisors. Manuela Albuquerque, named Outstanding Public Lawyer of the Year by the State Bar of California. Audrey Cochran, the first CSUB alumna to receive the CSUB President's Medal. Christine Lazardi Frazier, the first woman to be named Kern County Superintendent of Schools. And Blanca Cavazos, the first woman and person of color appointed superintendent of the Taft Union High School District. Mari Perez Dowling, the first Latina to serve as president and CEO of United Way of Kern. And the achievements of our alumni don't end there. In public safety, they have held the positions of leadership in Bakersfield Fire Department and Police Department. Two Bakersfield police chiefs are CSUB alumni, Bill Rector and the late Eric Matlock, the city's first black police chief. CSUB graduates have demonstrated compassion and service to our community's most vulnerable populations. Tom Corson works with foster youth. Judy Snyder founded a resource network for rape survivors. Colleen Magali spent her career helping children navigate the court system. In business and public service roles, our graduates are breaking ground everywhere. Jeff Huckabee is CEO and president of Grimway Farms. Russell Judd is the CEO of Kern Medical. Greg Bynum is one of the largest commercial developers in our area. Former Kern County Administrative Officers John Nylon, Joe Drew, and Joel Heinrichs all hail from CSUB. And some of the most innovative, tireless educators in our region have come through our outstanding teacher education department. Jeremy Adams, Don Carter, David Reese, and Jeff Elwell. In the arts, we are so proud of the accomplishments of renowned artist Jeff Colson and author Kathleen O'Neill Gear, who are among performing artists and musicians who are the heartbeat of the cultural life of our region and nation. The names I mentioned this evening comprise just a partial list of the achievers, strivers, and public servants who bring distinction and honor to our university. And this year, on the occasion of the 15th induction ceremony, we add the names of five luminaries in our runner family. Mary Barlow, Kern County Superintendent of Schools. Dr. Barlow is my partner in what I believe to be the great crusade of our region. Together, we and our colleagues in local K-16 through education are committed to opening a world of possibilities to our region's young people. Mary knows our kids and the challenges they face because she was one of them. She is an example to all of the power of education to uplift and transform. Raji Barar is leading businesswoman and entrepreneur and the first Sikh woman ever elected to a city council in California. Raji is a bright light who puts the needs of our community above all else. She is a tireless advocate for young women and a role model to immigrant families. As a member of the CSUB Foundation Board, Raji continues to invest her passion and time in today's runners. Jeremy Gunn, one of the top soccer coaches in the nation and in the history of collegiate athletics. Jeremy began his storied career right here at CSUB as a standout soccer player. He served in several coaching roles that led him to other universities, including Fort Lewis College in Colorado, the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, and now at Stanford University. Clark Jensen, the founder of Global Family Care Network, charitable enterprises that rescue children from trafficking and implement transformative community development programs. His passion is to relieve suffering caused by poverty, marginalization, and exploitation around the world. This calling to help others was born right here in Bakersfield when Clark worked as a teacher at Stockdale Christian School and joined 
joined the pastoral team at the First Assembly of God Church. John Means, Vice Chancellor of Educational Services for the Kern Community College District. John oversees a wide range of programs to help the district's more than 30,000 students succeed. John got his start in community service alongside Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta, organizing support groups for farm workers that took on local environmental battles against toxic waste, suspected cancer clusters, and polluted drinking water. John is a social justice warrior at a time when our young people are looking for exemplars who have worked to challenge our country to live up to its highest principles. Thank you, inductees, for giving yourselves. Thank you to your families for sharing your talents and expertise with the rest of us. You have made the world a better place and continue to bring light and hope to all of us. And now, Runner family and friends, before we move forward with the program, I would like to take a moment to remember a remarkable alumnus and leader in education in Kern County. John Hefner, whom we lost in January, was a hero at Fruitvale Junior High and beyond. He knew every one of his students by name and demonstrated the excellence and brilliance of Kern County students by transforming Fruitvale into a powerhouse school in this nation. Our hearts are with the Fruitvale family. And now, Jim and Maddie, would like for you to introduce a special video we're quite proud of here at CSUB. Jim and Maddie. Now, we have mentioned that CSUB turned the big 5-0 this year. Yes, we know we have, but it's really remarkable how far this university has come from that first year, graduating just 100 students in English, history, or sociology, to now graduating nearly 3,000 scholars a year into dozens of career fields. We are most proud to tell you this story in this video, chronicling 50 years of CSUB. It's not too hard to imagine what California State University Bakersfield looked like in its early days. Through a donation from Kern County Land Company, a 375-acre parcel of land along Stockdale Highway became home to the university. Since the first day of classes on October 1st, 1970, CSUB has built over half of the 375 acres, adding facilities to accommodate academic programs, student life, and the greater community really value that community feel and so something that has always stuck with me is the fact that we are a runner family and that's something that I always say because when you come here no matter who you are no matter what background or where you come from here the faculty and even the students really help you feel as if you are a runner we have much to celebrate because we have come a long way in 50 years we are nationally recognized for our commitment to student success and for providing access to higher education for our deserving students. Our students are brilliant and increasingly diverse and our graduates continue to serve the region and the world by solving some of our most complex challenges. One of the biggest things for me is helping the students realize that there is more to academics than just what they learn here. Um, and helping them realize that everything they do is going to have an impact in their lives. What CSUV provides for them is an opportunity to expand beyond just the academics. Students at Antelope Valley benefit greatly from the CSUB AV Center. Um, students are able to take undergrad and graduate level courses and not leave the community. Many of our students are grounded in this community and really transferring away is just not an option for them. And so CSUB provides the opportunity to attend a CSU and also stay in the Antelope Valley. CSUB's prestige and what it means to be a runner, I think you see that across so many different organizations here in the Valley. Uh, it's absolutely essential. I would say CSUB is the core of the Central Valley. So many students rely on them to get ahead in life. So I think that is what you get with Cal State Bakersfield. You get progress. And that's what CSUB means for this Valley is progress. We thought we had really made it when we made it to the 25th. And reaching the 50th ahead 
half a century tells us we are middle-aged because you compare us with many other universities that have been in existence for a hundred years. We were always the new young kid on the block. And so to be 50 years old, to, to really sort of have grown up, I think is a cause for celebration. We are a university that is on the rise. And we enter our next 50 years with great optimism. The success of CSUB over these past 50 years would not be possible without the support of community partners. That includes alumni who teach classes, employers who hire graduates, donors who give to programs, and sponsors who support events. Tonight, we'd like to say a special thank you to the presenting sponsor of the 2021 Alumni Hall of Fame celebration, Chevron. And we'd like to share a few words from Chevron, Diamond sponsor, The Wonderful Company, and Gold sponsor, Grimway Farms. Wonderful pistachios. Get your protein from a greener source. Wonderful pistachios, the original plant-based protein. It's only human to find inspiration in nature and also find answers. Our search to transform farm waste into renewable natural gas led Chevron to partner with California Bioenergy, working to provide an alternative source of power for a cleaner way forward. Want to share a snack with a stranger? Is that a poison apple? It's a wish apple. Yeah, if your wish is to be full of poison. Want it? Good choice, kid. Wonderful halos. Sweet, seedless, easy peel. Now, for the most exciting part of the evening, we get to honor the 2021 CSUB Alumni Hall of Fame inductees. And our first is Mary Barlow. Mary has devoted her career to making sure schools are a place where kids can excel, no matter their circumstances, the way they were for her during a challenging childhood. Education was a second career for Mary, who got started teaching elementary school in Weldon and Kernville. After a hate crime in her community, Mary led creation of the Kern River Valley Collaborative, a network of agencies, schools, nonprofits, and businesses that still provides social services to kids and families in that struggling region. Mary served as superintendent of the Kernville Union School District before joining her current home, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools Office, in a variety of top administrative roles. In 2017, she became the County Superintendent, where her focus has been boosting student achievement, ensuring education equity and access, and implementing technology that helps kids learn. So that is something about Mary. Here's more. Teachers played a pivotal role in my early life and really shaped who I became as a teacher. My family was not unlike the families here in Kern County. Uh, we had a loving mother and a father and three sisters, and um, we just had a beautiful life together. However, my father had mental illness and was in and out of VA hospitals most of his life. And when he was in the hospital, he was not able to work. When he was out of the hospital, he'd worked two or three jobs to put food on the table for us and take care of us. But as a result, we moved around a lot and we struggled with poverty. But what I learned is that when I would go to a, a new classroom, every time I moved to a new school, I would connect with one individual, a teacher, a custodian, someone who cared about me and made me feel important. And that left a lasting imprint on me. And so as a teacher, when I had my first classroom, the very first thing I would do is create that social emotional support and that safe environment where students felt cared for and supported by one another and that they knew that I had their best interests in mind before I focused on academics. Mary Barlow, 
is truly a pioneering superintendent. She has vision. She believes in equity for all. She has worked and strived to make sure that children not only learn to read and write, but they also are able to learn. And by that I mean she knows that a kid's not going to learn if they're sitting in a classroom with an empty belly. The child's not going to learn if they spent the night in the closet hiding because of domestic violence. She knows that there's more to reading and writing. There needs to be emotional support, social support, making sure the families are whole and have the opportunity for those kids to come to school ready to learn. Being inducted into the CSUB Hall of Fame is absolutely humbling. I am completely honored, especially to share the stage with these phenomenal leaders. And it's the 50th anniversary. I also want to say that I hope that this encourages other people who, students who are considering where they want to go to school, that they really do not have to travel far to get an incredibly excellent education and stay in their community and change their community and pay it forward. There is not another person that I think is more deserving to be an alumni Hall of Famer than Mary Barlow. One of my favorite sayings is when people show you what they are, believe them. And Mary has shown me that she is a person of integrity, a person of class, she's tenacious, compassionate, intelligent, and she's a true leader. She truly believes in people and she gives people the skills and tools they need to succeed. Mary is truly somebody that belongs in the CSUB Hall of Fame. I'd really like to thank all the faculty members here, past and present at CSUB, who helped me shape the leader I have become and also continue to work so diligently on the current education pledge, which will bring change and better outcomes for students across Kern County. I would like to thank Dr. Lynette Selesny for her amazing and inspirational leadership and energy. I would like to thank the Alumni Association for selecting me for this great honor. And I would also like to thank my senior cabinet for coming alongside and making sure that every hour of every day of the past nine months, we have focused on serving the students of Kern County. And finally, I would like to thank my husband, Steve, and my amazing children, Tony, Matt, Ryan, Sarah, Kendall, Alicia, and little Fernie, because they have been supportive and loving throughout this whole journey. Our second inductee, Raji Brar, is a self-made businesswoman, groundbreaking political leader, and committed advocate for the Sikh community. Raji is Chief Operating Officer of Countryside Market and Restaurants, a family-run company that employs more than 450 people here in Kern County. She's also the first Sikh woman elected to a city council in California, a member of the CSUB Foundation Board, and co-founder of the Sikh Women's Association, which awards scholarships, organizes health screenings, and operates a hotline for her fellow six. Raji is a San Joaquin Valley native whose parents came here to escape the tumult in India. The hard work her parents put into providing a good life for their family, starting with farm work and now running a chain of markets, gas stations, restaurants and more, inspires her to help other families do the same. On the Arvin City Council, Raji fought to get onto the Valley Air Board to advocate for the health of smaller communities like hers. On the Kern County Fair Board, she helped end elephant rides, a practice unheard of in India. On the CSUB Foundation Board, she advises the fundraising arm of her alma mater. Here's more about this trailblazing runner. Well, I'm a first-generation Sikh American. My parents are immigrants that came from Punjab, India. And growing up here in the Central Valley, I never saw anybody who looked like me. I never saw any woman that was Sikh in any position of power or any role that I could look up to. So as I got older and I graduated from college and I got into my business and I kind of settled into my routine of life of things, I realized that it was time for me to give back to my community and I wanted to make sure that the younger generation of young Sikh girls coming up had a resource to look to and go to if they needed it. And so myself and my friends, who mostly are first generation Sikh American women, decided to form the Sikh Women's Association. Raji really holds dear to her heart her service to the community. And that's all communities. And I think that stems from obviously growing up as a young brown Indian girl 
in this culture system that unfortunately has a habit of casting a shadow on young women. And now that Raji's gone through these struggles and is in a position to where she can make an impact in the community, uh, I really see that she dedicated herself to these young women to help them find out who they really are, who they really can become. Well, CSUB has been so integral in my life, not only educating me in the sciences and in healthcare, and then my professors helping me to get a job after I graduate from college. I mean, you know, that is so unheard of sometimes, but that's how personal the attention was at CSUB. So when anybody, whether you're an alumni, and you come back and ask for help, you're going to get it. To know Raji, is to know that she's in service to others. And in our language, we call it seva, in service. And what that is, is basically, she gets up daily to make sure that she can do something to better someone else's life. Whatever that may be, she dedicates herself to people, she dedicates herself to the community. And so it doesn't surprise me at all that she was inducted in this Hall of Fame to as honoree because she truly is a unique individual. I'm so honored to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. I believe it's a full circle moment for me. Uh, I feel very validated in a way for being uh, inducted to the Hall of Fame because there was a time in my life where I was at a crossroads. Um, and being inducted to the Hall of Fame, I think I realized I made the right decision in what I wanted to do in my life. And so um, it is a, an honor, I think, being the first Sikh woman to be inducted and just the first Sikh person to be inducted to the CSUB Hall of Fame uh, means a lot to me. And my hope is that definitely this will make sure that I'm not the last. There's a lot of folks who've been a part of my life who helped groom me and motivate me and help me succeed. And obviously, first and foremost, it'd be my mother and my father. They're the ones who, uh, you know, risked everything and left their homelands to come here to have a better life for their children. And that's something I can never repay. Um, and my family, my, my younger brother has been such a big help and a, a supporter of mine throughout the years. My husband, uh, always, you know, we've been together a long time and he's always championed me and helped me in all my causes. And my children, who are very supportive of their mother and um, whether they want to hear about things or not they are involved in all the work I do and and are very supportive of me and I've been blessed that I've not only had a supportive family but supportive friends and teachers and neighbors and community members who've raised me and for anybody out there who is mentoring who's a teacher or friend make sure that you reach out to those students because you never know who you're gonna affect and how that person might take what you say and run with it I've been blessed that I had a a lot of folks told me a lot of great things and I ran with it. So um, I'm grateful to all those folks and I share this honor with everyone who's been a part of my life. Now on to our third inductee, Jeremy Gunn. He's one of college soccer's all-time greatest coaches. Jeremy leads the men's soccer squad at Stanford University, where in 2017 he became the only second soccer coach to win three national titles in a row. He's one of only four soccer coaches to have won NCAA championships at both the Division I and Division II levels and has been named National Coach of the Year three times. Sorry for all the numbers, but this is sports. And Jeremy, a native of England, got his collegiate start at CSUB, where he is still the university's all-time top goal scorer. He went on to become coach Simon Tobin's assistant during what was CSUB men's soccer's most successful years. Jeremy also helped start and lead the women's soccer program at his alma mater. Between CSUB and Stanford, Jeremy led four Lewis College's soccer team to a national title in 2005 and took the University of North Carolina at Charlotte to its first Division I championship game in 2011. Here's more on the always goal-oriented Jeremy Gunn. I'm very proud to say that I'm from Harrogate in North Yorkshire, a beautiful little spa town. But I, I lived all over the place growing up, and when I look at sports in my life and in my childhood, it was pretty much everything. I had an older sister and two older brothers, but myself and my brothers, all we ever did was play sport growing up. Even when I moved around from place to place where I was a complete outsider and it was difficult to fit in, um, suddenly the ball would be dropped and you'd get playing with other kids. 
athletes and you became accepted that way so when I think of what sports did for me absolutely it completely shaped my life and then obviously it changed the rest of my life coming out here on a soccer scholarship. I met Jeremy Gunn when I was recruiting in England uh, he was playing for his county his state in northern England Jeremy put Bakersfield on the map from being nowhere Jeremy one of the leaders of that group that got us for the first time in the top 20 in the country into the top 10 and uh, our first NCAA appearance my, my time in Bakersfield molded me as a person. I, I arrived when I was 18, um, wet behind the ears, and then then left Bakersfield 10 years later uh, as a young man. The, the community and the support that we had was something that was just absolutely monumental. I will never be able to repay them for all of their kindness. What I can do as I live my life, though, is just always remember the kindness and um, patience they showed me and hopefully I can continue to pay that forward as I I get to see young college students and young people making their way in the world. When I think about NCAA Division One men's soccer coaches and the way the game, how competitive it is today, I feel that he's the best NCAA Division One men's soccer coach there's ever been. His introduction to the CSUB Hall of Fame is well warranted. His CSUB through and through, it, it's where he started. But more than that, uh, he's a tremendous, tremendous advertisement for what Cal State Bakersfield has produced. The thanks in my career uh, goes out to all of the great coaches that I've worked with and all of the people that I've shared time with, where everybody's been so willing to work so hard and to, to be supportive, where sometimes I've been been able to support them and at other times they've been able to support me and so a great deal of thanks goes out to everybody that I've worked with through my career you know I've always bled blue and gold and always taken the incredible grounding that I, I had from my time at CSUB I have the fondest memories and if I start to talk I'll, I'll well up with tears thinking about what it means to me to be a part of that great family and community I, I am extremely proud and extremely honored and um, uh, very, very thankful to be a part of such something that means so much to me in my life. And uh, hopefully all I can ever endeavor to do is continue to hopefully represent Cal State Bakersfield in, in the best way possible. And hopefully um, continuing to do the university as proud as I can do. We can't say it enough. The success of the CSUB Alumni Hall of Fame event hinges on the generous support of our sponsors. So we'd like to thank more of them. KGET Channel 17, we're proud to say, is tonight's media sponsor. Not only are Jim and I your hosts, but KGET helped produce this broadcast. Tonight's gold sponsors are Bynum Incorporated and Brimway Farms, both led by Hall of Fame inductees Greg Bynum and Jeff Huckabee. And tonight's silver sponsors are Countryside Market and Restaurants and the Kern County Community College District. Now we have additional messages to share from our top sponsors. The antioxidant goodness in every bottle of Palm Wonderful makes it a potent weapon against free radicals. Your antioxidant superpower committed to protecting you from unforeseen foes. And Palm is super <coughs> wonderfully delicious. Palm Wonderful, the antioxidant superpower. It's only human to pursue the elusive while also capturing the possibilities. Even something like CO2. Over the last decade, Chevron has spent over $1 billion on carbon capture projects and is investing in startup companies working to transform carbon into new forms of energy. Sheldon, good to see you. I can see you're upset. But when we said ditch the shells, we were talking about pistachios, not you. Oh, you mean these pistachios? Oh, oh no, you look upset. You okay, John? Can we get some arugula, please?
And we move on now to our fourth inductee, Clark Jensen. He's the founder of enterprises that rescue children from trafficking, care for survivors of modern slavery, and implementing transformative community development programs around the world. Clark founded Global Family Care Network, an organization working in nine countries that protects children and preserves families through prevention, intervention, therapeutic counseling, and alternative aftercare and reintegration services. He is director of St. James Research Center in Scotland, which he founded to research and train practitioners in evidence-based social interventions. He also founded an initiative that provided disaster relief after the Asian tsunami in 2004, a crowdsourcing platform that connects donors to initiatives in the developing world, and a manufacturing business that employs survivors of exploitation in Nepal. His daughter project forms girls' empowerment clubs and curriculum. Clark's first efforts working with at-risk children was starting kids' clubs in partnership with Teen Challenge here in Bakersfield during the early 1990s. Here's more on the worldwide work of Clark Jensen. From a very young age, I developed a passion or a sense of calling to help children that grow up in difficult circumstance. When I was 18, I went to Kolkata, India and was a basketball coach at a school that served slum children. And it really solidified in me this desire um, to do that with my life. They started their work in northern India in the Himalayas in 1999. And I feel that it, uh, when I've spoken with Clark about this, it was then that he felt so impressed that every child is as precious to God as our own. And Clark really had that seed planted in his heart. And from that, it has progressed to, again, being in nine countries with 15 shelters around the world and caring for over a thousand girls so far in our shelters, plus thousands of girls in our empowerment clubs. So there were some like real nuts and bolts things that I learned uh, in terms of research methodologies and skills while I was at CSUB that's helped me uh, throughout my career. And secondly, uh, it expanded uh, my mindset. It, it exposed me to a whole different way of looking at the world. Well, I happen to know some of the CSUB alumni, and uh, for example, Kathy Bennett, who worked tirelessly on the board of CASA to help abuse and neglected children. Colleen Magali, who was the executive director of CASA, that worked tirelessly to help abuse and neglected children. And now Clark Jensen, who works tirelessly to help exploited children and help prevent exploitation and sexual slavery. So he's amongst good company and good companies amongst him. That's why he deserves to be in the CSUB Hall of Fame. It's humbling for sure and um, I appreciate the recognition not just for me but for Global Family and for the work that Global Family has done around the world. Most obviously, I'm thankful for my wife, uh, who founded the organization with me, and she's the executive director, and her team, and the lead coordinators in the different countries around the world, the shelter staff, the foster parents, the community volunteers, and the community organizers. I'm thankful for CSUB, uh, a big part of my life and my story, uh, the preparation that I had there. And lastly, I want to thank the Bakersfield community. Uh, we've had so much support. Uh, almost everything that we do around the world is because of the Kern County community and the people that have gotten behind the work. Uh, so many people have been to our gala. Most of our board members are from Bakersfield. And we think it's a, um, a generous and a good community who cares uh, really a lot about their own children, but also about children in places where they'll never be or they'll never get to see them. So we're thankful for that sort of community uh, that's uh, generous and cares about doing good in the world.
fifth and final inductee, John Means, is a son of Taft, who went on to become an environmental justice advocate, leader in elected and party politics, and innovator of programs that expand educational opportunities for disadvantaged students. John got his start in community service alongside the UFW, organizing support groups for farm workers. Then, as a Bakersfield City Councilman, he took on local environmental causes and helped secure funds for the bike path. John spent his early educational career helping Kern High School District students grapple with emotional and behavioral problems while also teaching part-time at Bakersfield College and CSUB. At BC, he later developed the Central Valley's first center to mainstream infants and kids with disabilities. John eventually pivoted to developing economic and workforce development programs as a dean in El Camino College in the South Bay, then back home as an associate chancellor at the Kern Community College District. Today, John pays particular attention to helping Latinos, single mothers, and students with disabilities succeed in higher education. We all have a lot to learn from John, as you'll see here. I grew up in Taft, and my mom graduated from high school, but my dad never did graduate from high school. He uh, started working in the shipyards at, when he was 16, and so uh, was working hard the whole time I was growing up. Didn't, I didn't know much about college. I was very fortunate that uh, I connected with a counselor that explained to me on how to sign up for classes, how to study. Having that relationship where they took the time and the end interest to coach me had such an impact on me that I decided right then and there that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to work at a community college. I wanted to be a counselor at a community college where I could impact students' lives and students who were at college for the very first time and weren't sure about where to go or how to do things that I wanted to be a part of that and have that kind of an impact. I first met John back in the uh, late 70s when he was with the city council, the uh, city of Bakersfield. John has always been student-oriented, uh, student success. Um, and then it was success of the programs and the campuses. So that work that he's doing, that focus on, on student success and workforce development is very important to the Valley and to the individual communities, uh, especially for the economy. I'm just really incredibly grateful for being inducted into the Alumni Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm humbled and uh, appreciative of the opportunity to uh, to be here and to be part of the inductees this year, as well as when I look at the ones from the prior years. Uh, it's uh, I'm I'm just very very grateful, and I. Uh, uh, just thrilled to be a part of it and uh, it really makes you feel like you're speechless you're not sure what to say because it's uh, it's, it's just a wonderful feeling I've always thought that this campus worked real hard at being part of the community it's always been community oriented John is community oriented it's about developing people and, and I think he truly believes in community uh, and, and the campus does. It's, it's a hand in hand. I, I think it's a perfect, perfect match. Um, and I think he's well deserving of the honor. The people I'd like to thank are CSUB, of course, which has always provided so much. Uh, the Alumni Association and everybody connected with it. I want to thank my family, uh, Melissa, Estelle, Ethan, and Julie, my wife and my partner. And I'd like to thank everybody that I've always worked with. If you ever accomplish anything, uh, you only do that by being working with your colleagues and your bosses that allow you to, know, to do what you need to do and support you. And uh, the people I've, I've been incredibly lucky and wonderful opportunity to work with the people I've worked with that helped me achieve uh, anything that uh, I've been able to do that I've talked about, so I want to thank everybody.
congratulations, John, and also to your fellow inductees tonight, Mary, Raji, Jeremy, and Clark. It has been an honor and a pleasure to help welcome you all into the CSUV Alumni Hall of Fame. All of our inductees will receive a crystal award from the Alumni Association and resolutions from Kern County State Legislators commending you for your work and your contributions. It has been a wonderful evening, Maddie, and we want to thank all of you for joining us at this first televised broadcast of the CSUV Alumni Hall of Fame induction ceremony. A great way to not only celebrate tonight's inductees, but the 15th anniversary of this event and the golden anniversary of the university. Yeah, truly an amazing night. Maybe we can do it this way again. We'd like to give one last thank you to tonight's presenting sponsor, Chevron, as well as to our diamond sponsor, the wonderful company, media sponsor, KGET, gold sponsors, Bynum Incorporated and Grimway Farms, silver sponsors, Countryside Market and Restaurants, and the Kern Community College District, and many friend sponsors. This celebration truly would not be possible without your generous support, so thank you. We want to leave you tonight with scenes from 50 years of CSUB educating runners. Good night.
Thank <laughs> you.